Leviathan's been a bit of a bumpy road of bugs and, and issues. But it's starting to get a lot better with the 1.31.3 patch. But what if I told you that there's a way in the game to vassalize every country in the game, no matter how large they are, with no cap, even some nations as large as the Ming can be vassalized in EU4 in Iron Man mode. And as you can see in December 1448. If that's something that interests you, be sure to watch the end of this video. And if you'd be so kind as to drop a like and a subscribe, it really helped me out. I'm making a push for 10,000 subscribers and about 70% of you guys that watch these videos aren't subscribed. It's a free little thing you can do that really helps out a small content creator like me. And uh, let's get going. So the key to making this exploit or trick or whatever you want to call it work is to get your estates to give you some sort of subjugation CB. This is a good example. We are Oirat and our tribes are going to give us a subjugation CB on Caradel. Now, if we were to attack Caradel, he is of course a tributary state of Ming. If we were to co-belligerent Ming, he would be eligible to be subjugated. Let me uh, let me get prepped and see if I can pull off this war um, and I can show it to you guys. All right, so first things first, we're gonna get prepped. Obviously, money and manpower from estates, get ourselves a general, get ourselves some mercenaries and go up to force limit and get positioned on Caradel. I was lucky enough to get a discipline guy. I went for prestige. I probably didn't need the admin and diplo guys, but that's okay. Money's not really an object as a horde. And we get this war started. So the key in a war like this, and guys on my Discord might be like, don't listen to Quagrasol. He messed up with Oirat in an multiplayer game. But, you know, in this case, we get to pause and we get to manage our fights with the Ming. The key with this is to make sure that you engage the Ming on flat, open terrain to take advantage of your horde abilities and to try to uh, get fights in which the, you can get stack wipes on smaller stacks. Now, it's easier said than done, but you have a couple advantages. You have a five shock general in the case of your emperor. And if you're lucky enough to capture the ruler of the Ming or the heir of the Ming, I forget which one it is, um, you can get a plus 20% morale bonus uh, and siege ability bonus. It's very important. Now here this is our first big battle after a few small wipes and we already took Hami. If you didn't notice we got a three siege pip general from uh, uh, just rolling it and that's amazing. You see here we're doing like uh, 300 to 1800 you know, we have a morale and a discipline advantage, but our front is starting to collapse already. We did pretty good there, but we want to pull out because we want to keep our KD ratio up pretty high. Now, the hope is that we can engage them here on Hami, uh, the capital of Caradel, because it's open terrain, but we'll always be the defender, obviously, because we control it. Um, I was lucky enough here to position things in such a way, you see that guy in Baden, Janin going up to Noyon, he's locked. So we should be able to push in on both of these two uh, stacks of armies. They're about 9k each or something like that and get attacks here. And I just noticed that the heir of the Ming is in control of the army on the right. And we just captured him by stack wiping the army. Or you don't, you only have to defeat the army. You don't have to stack wipe it. So now we have the siege ability and the morale of armies so we can push forward. Get ourselves a stability to start uh, getting some prosperity going and keep wiping these little stacks. It may seem inconsequential to take out a one, two, or three stack kind of thing, um, but it is important. You can take them out for very little uh, investment of manpower and you get your ratio up. Um, your kill to death ratio is uh, very important in, it, in this where you're outnumbered something like 30 to 110 or something like that so now my idea is to pull back across but we want to try to fight the Ming in Mongolia um, and the reason for that is 
Mongolia is disloyal at this point. I actually con concentrated some of his dev, um, but he's already disloyal at the beginning of the game. I know that he's going to be disloyal because of Ming later. Um, but if we fight in Mongolia, Mongolia will do things like sortie out his troops from his capital there, and he'll bring his 10 stack in to try to help. Even disloyal vassals or subjects of any type will defend their land. Um, they won't go do offensive stuff for you, but they'll defend their own stuff. And here we were able to get one fight in and then utilize it as a place where the Ming would come in to attack us. You see there, he was locked twice in a way that we got to hurt some pretty powerful armies, get a few stack wipes even. Now I'm shift consolidating here to try to push to get that 16 stack, but it turns out partially it was in retreat. So I probably shouldn't have shift consolidated because you want to stay wide when you're trying to get your uh, manpower to flow back into your armies. But I'm noticing that we're running out of manpower, so I'm gonna pick up a few mercs. Um, looks like the free company and one small company there. Um, then I'll full consolidate, and I'm gonna push these armies on the right down to Beijing and see if we can capture with our three siege pip and our plus 25% siege ability. And then the hope is that when Ming returns, he will push back into Mongolia, or he'll go after my two smaller mercs on the left that I intend to keep uh, fairly exposed, if that makes sense. Not, not put them together uh, very often and try to go after these little stacks in such a way that hopefully entice him to stay away from its capital. Now that's a hard sell for the AI because the AI really does love to defend their capital. It makes perfect sense uh, for Paradox to code it that way. Um, here I put them two together to try to, to try to stack wipe this six stack here. Um, just, you know, want to keep getting kills. That's still important. Keep consolidating. Unfortunately, now we're down to one cab and one infantry damage, so I can't put them together. Bit of a nerve-wracking time while we wait to see if we can get the, the capital, but the siege pips and the wall breach really help. And there we go, the capture of Beijing. As you can see, we get all of North China occupied uh, because of the capture of Beijing event. This is our best opportunity to push south. I'm going to take uh, the three siege pip and just enough troops to push south to take out a fort or two more. Let's jump ahead uh, to when I have this fully under control. So I could take this now from Caradel, or I could wait 80 reasons on, uh, on Ming. He's got a bunch of rebels. We're taking more forts. We've got him pretty sieged down, but I think I'm just going to take it now. Um, both to prove that it's possible and to see that if I can ride this bull. 100 prestige is nice. Uh, probably don't need to waste anything on Mongolia. That's the thing here. Mongolia is going to be disloyal, just as disloyal as Ming. Because of the way that vassals share their disloyalty. Um, so we're going to have a while before we can ever do anything. We're going to have to use a lot of wars. And a lot of growing ourselves, which is why I've already started spying on Chagatai here. I want to make a bunch of claims and push this way. There's a gold mine out here I'd like. 1448. Ming is a vassal of Oirat. And has something like 600% liberty design. <laughs> Oh, that's so great. <laughs> Obligatory plug for my Twitch channel. We are doing a CK3 portion of a mega campaign that's about to transition into EU4. So follow over on the Twitch channel if you want to see it. And I'll see you over there. There we go. It's as simple as that. I mean, it's not simple. That was quite difficult, but I was able to pull it off. And once we've concentrated the dev, our capital is at 116 development. Our force limit shot up to 56. And uh, we now have loans that go from, instead of 61, I can take a loan of 141. We're in a precarious situation, obviously, with Ming ready to rebel at any point. Um, and at this point, we could do one of two things. One, 
we could let him go. In 1462, just let him go. Um, we've grabbed a bunch of dev out of him, and then we can turn around and attack him normally. He's still the Emperor of China, and I believe that stays even if uh, we keep going, because you apparently can be the Emperor of China as a vassal. Or we could attempt to ride this bull all the way into the sunset. We've got uh, Oirat is already set up as a very amazing world conquest possibility. We can start pushing towards the Mongol Empire. And uh, in, the, in the process, every 50 years or so, we just uh, concentrate more dev. Do it in 1498. <laughs> Probably double this thing <laughs> up to somewhere over 200. Um, assuming we haven't, you know, conquest raised and concentrated development out of a bunch of land over here or over here or out of the little guys that pop out of Ming, that sort of thing. I think this could be really fun. Uh, a campaign in, a, in an interesting way uh, and set up for a world conquest. If any of you guys decide to attempt this, I'd love to see what you come up with. Let me know what you guys think of this. If you have other exploits that you're aware of in the game that you think might make good videos, I appreciate you. Comment that down below or head on over to the Discord. Thanks for watching to the end of the video, and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye. Hey, you made it to the end of the video. How about checking out one of the other videos on the screen? Leave a like if you enjoyed, and subscribe if you want to see more. It really helps out the channel. Comment down below with other videos you'd like to see, or head on over to the Discord. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.